Before we look at Psalm 84 together, my chosen psalm for today, I want to ask you some questions. What do you want out of life? What do you live for? What's your heart's desire? What do you long or yearn for? Now, if I was going to be totally honest, my answers to the above before my conversion would have been pretty self-centred and, as the old saying goes, all about me. Now life's very different by God's amazing grace and mercy. So let's look and read what the writer of Psalm 84 has to say about his longing and heart's desire. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts! My soul longs, yes, faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and flesh sing for joy to the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest for herself where she may lay her young. At your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house, ever singing your praise, Selah. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the highways to Zion. As they go through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The early rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. Each one appears before God in Zion. O Lord, God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob, Selah. Behold our shield, O God. Look on the face of your anointed. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favour and honour. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the one who trusts in you. So, to answer that question, clearly the psalmist in this psalm says it's God. His soul faints and longs to be in God's presence in the courts of his temple. To enter the courts of the Lord is equivalent to approaching the living God himself. We don't quite know the circumstances around why the writer is not with the other pilgrims going up to Jerusalem, but he indicates he's not with them and is potentially going through some kind of tough time. And yet he thinks of those other believers and worshippers making the journey and wishes the Lord to bless those whose strength is in you. I love what Spurgeon has to say here. It matters little when this psalm was written or by whom. For our part, it exhales to us a Davidic perfume. It smells of the mountain heather and the lone places of the wilderness where King David must have often lodged during his many wars. This is one of the most sweet of the psalms of peace. I personally see this peace reflected, especially in verse 3, the picture of the sparrows and swallows who are able to nest and live within the temple confines, giving a beautiful, tender image of safety and security as the swallow may lay her young in God's sanctuary. We are reminded that the pilgrim's journey, as our own, is not an easy one, as they walk through the desert plains and the desert of Baca. But God provides water, and they can confidently walk forwards from strength to strength. God is their map and compass. He directs their path. As Christian believers, we too thirst for God, and our Christian hope sustains us on our own individual pilgrimage to heaven. And then we come to those beautiful lines in verses 10 and 11, which many of us know and love. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. Desiring and loving God brings us contentment, a contentment we could never find in ourselves. And with that comes that love comes service. The psalmist delights in head and heart service to a God who is his son and shield. I think that right now, as we're separated during this time of lockdown, we can be encouraged and consoled with the words contained in the whole of the Psaltery, each psalm offering something different for everyone who comes to them. And I would encourage you to read them daily for their wisdom and the truths that they contain as we face each day in these troubled times. Even when we're physically apart though, we can be as one in unity as we read and reflect together in order to be strengthened and heartened 
and find joy in these uncertain days in the one who is worthy to be praised and worship for his glory. Before we pray, I'd just like to read some of the words of a hymn written in 1834 by Henry Light. And I'm sure our musicians and lovers of the old songs will know these well. Pleasant are your courts above, in the land of light and love. Pleasant are your courts below, in this land of sin and woe. Oh, my spirit longs and faints for the converse of your saints, for the brightness of your face, for your fullness, God of grace. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you and praise you that we can know the joy of living for you, living for the one who is worth living for. Let our hunger always be satisfied in Christ Jesus and his atoning work and sacrifice upon the cross. Let us always yearn and long for you and give thanks for your amazing grace and mercy towards us. Let us delight in our service through our love for you, the Father who so loved the world that he gave us his only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Thank you, Lord and Father, we love you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen.